before starting imaging the Milky Way with the door 3, I don't want to talk with you about Uranus. <laughs> don't get any wrong ideas, this is an astronomy channel. I'm talking about a new astronomy weather app, very accurate, that will help you get better Milky Way images with the door 3 or better astrophotography images in general. This uh, application has a similar name with Uranus and I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce it correctly. Maybe Uranus or I think Uranus. So do let me know in the comments below how do you think is uh, pronounced correctly. So why this app is so special? Because it will allow you to plan your astrophotography sessions and to know when is the best time to go and capture the Milky Way and also the best location because it does have also a dark sky map that can help you find the dark sky location or choose from multiple locations by comparing each location and see where you have the best sky conditions. It does have sky quality graphs that will allow you to check on each day to see when is the best time to do astrophotography? We'll show the sky quality and the seeing. And this is crucial and will be the difference between a good astrophotography image and a bad one. This is an image with the Milky Way when clouds were coming and the thing was not great. And this is another image with the Milky Way when there were no clouds and I was able to capture a stunning image stack and make this image possible. And besides this useful data, it does have also AI-powered astronomy recommendations that will uh, give you the best time at night to uh, observe or do astrophotography. So to get the best images with the Milky Way, you need to start first to find the best location and moment, and an app like this can be the difference from getting good data or bad data. So planning is also very important in astrophotography, if you are doing astronomy and astrophotography, you should really check this app out. I will share links in the video description. And also if you want to capture the Milky Way with the door 3 this year, hurry up, check the video description and also order the door 3. I uh, started to get ready, charge the door 3 and uh, made sure I had uh, enough space on the SD card. And also I got an uh, external battery with me in case I need it for my smartphone or other devices. Uh, I really like this a lot because it has also its own cables so you can charge your phone directly, very portable and easy to take with you. Besides this power bank, I do want to show a must-have accessories to have with you if you are going to image the Milky Way with a Dwarf 3. But you need to have at least a mini tripod with you. I have the Dwarf 2 tripod and will use it to capture the Milky Way in equatorial mode. You can, uh, this is really fast, in a couple of seconds, you'll be able to get the Dwarf 3 running, place it somewhere in, on the grass and begin imaging. Optionally, you can get also the hydraulic head tripod from Dwarf Lab if you want to capture the Milky Way in uh, equatorial mode. However, I've noticed that uh, Dwarf 3 really does a good job even uh, at 90 seconds in Altazimuth mode. So I will go and image the Milky Way directly in Altazimuth mode using this kit tripod from the Dwarf 2. Uh, other must-have uh, accessories are uh, flashlights or headlamps. I usually take two headlamps like this with me. Also, uh, don't forget to charge them. For the example, mine just discharged now. It, it works a little bit and it stops. And it does have also red light. We'll share the affiliate links in the video description of these accessories, including the Dorsey Smart Telescope, that you should get it fast if you want to capture this season, also the Milky Way. Recently, I got a very nice portable flashlight. I think it is, this is for clothes from Dunlop and probably more for pants because even if you can place it here like on your on your t-shirt like this it can it will disturb you it can uh, uh, when you look down it will affect your night vision even if it does have a red light mode like this so it's best to use on your pants like uh, place it on your belt and uh, go like this and illuminate 
the equipment without needing to have a headlamp or anything else. Another useful tip is to try an experiment using filters. This can be light pollution filters or narrowband filters. The door 3 you'll uh, probably need a uh, 3D printed adapter to be able to use them, but it will give you the opportunity to get some unique results with the Milky Way, especially if you'll uh, use a narrowband filter like Optolong Para. It is not too strong and will give you some amazing results and allow you to capture the hydrogen, alpha and oxygen 3 of the Milky Way and have them really pop out in the image. Here is an example of the Milky Way capture with an UHC filter with a Dorsey Smart Telescope. Also get, of course, the Dorsey travel bag and the ND filters in case you need to take darks before um, starting the plan. If you don't have any dark frames and the default ones from Dwarf Lab are different temperature, it will uh, notify you to take dark frames. So having the ND filter is uh, useful to place it here on top of the optical tube, then rotate the optical tube and take fast some dark frames that will allow you to calibrate the lights and get better live stacks when imaging with the Dwarf 3. So I got everything ready, went to the car when uh, it started to get uh, darker and I had like 40 minutes until uh, to arrive to the location. Before arriving, I had a very nice surprise. Some uh, rabbits started racing me till I got to the monument that was at about 700 meters altitude. Uh, so everything was fine, but I did uh, had a uh, stronger wind than expected. Because of the stronger wind, I decided not to go with uh, long exposure. So you need to consider these factors before starting your astrophotography plan. If you have strong wind, then it's better to go with a dwarf tree with shorter exposures so you won't have too long star trails and get sharper data. Another useful tip, avoid capturing the Milky Way where you have car lights nearby. So uh, if you have some uh, cars with uh, powerful lights on, you should try to get farther away and uh, capture the Milky Way there, not to be too close to uh, those cars. Uh, car came when uh, starting to capture the Milky Way with strong lights. In this situation, I tried to be social, to be polite and ask them nicely to turn off the lights so I can get better results when capturing the Milky Way. And in return, I did uh, photograph them with the Bobona monument and I uh, filmed them in uh, 4K with slow shutter and higher ISO using my full frame camera Sony A7 III. So before starting, you need also to select your framing. So basically, turn on the door 3, you'll uh, calibrate, you'll finish the calibration, you'll check the, if the focus is correct. Then you need also to uh, see where you are imaging. I've uh, selected a uh, deep sky object somewhere on uh, close to the Milky Way, so I can frame the Milky Way nice with the wide field lens. I selected Messier 19 in the center, and check to see if the framing was right. I was interested in capturing the Milky Way with the Rho Fuji cloud complex and Antares nebula region. I had to have the Milky Way more to the left in the frame to be able to capture also this beautiful region. Very important here is also framing. Another tip is to avoid trees and other objects when capturing the Milky Way with Dwarf 3 because you don't want after to lose parts of the image there is another option to still be able to capture nature elements and, and use the frames, but you need to stack in other software called Sequator that has the option to stack the sky and freeze the ground. Once you're happy with the framing, you are ready to start imaging, but you still need to know the settings that you'll use to get the best results with the DOS 3. We have also a very nice update that allow us to capture the Milky Way with the white field lens using 90 seconds exposures. And this is very useful, especially for situations like this, when you want to capture the Milky Way and also the Rho Fuji region and the Blue Horse and Nebula. I wanted to go first 90 seconds gain zero to maximize dynamic range 
and image quality and to be able to capture those faint regions in the row of Uchi nebula complex. So in the end, because of the wind, I decided to go with 30 seconds exposures instead of 90. Now went 30 seconds gain 60. So another tip here, if you have also strong wind, avoid placing the telescope on a higher tripod because the wind will be even stronger. I just used the kit tripod from the Dwarf 2 Smart Telescope to place the Dwarf 3 lower. When good, then I've tested 30 seconds. And having Messier 19 in the center of the frame, I've started a plan with the Dorsey Smart Telescope to capture the Milky Way and the Rho of Uchi Cloud Complex and Antares Nebula region. So we finished for tonight. We captured the Milky Way with the Dorsey Smart Telescope in just 15 minutes. I was able to post-process it fast using the Stellar Studio feature. Well, I hope these tips helped you and uh, you'll be able to get very good images with the Milky Way next time when you'll go out with the Dwarfsy Smart Telescope. If uh, you enjoyed watching, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and also check the affiliate links in the video description if you want to buy the Dwarf 3. I want to give thanks to all the channel members that supported the channel so far. It means a lot, your support. And if you want to support also the channel, hit the join button, get also access to cool perks like Master Photography data, also more products will be available on the channel membership like prints, also photography images captured with the Dwarf 3, like the Milky Way and the Hard Nebula.